Now I would like to uh, get your attention on our next presenter. So, uh, we'll please welcome Alexandre. Woo! So, uh, this is going to be uh, an overview presentation of uh, what you can do with BIM and why you should be uh, learning it. I trust that uh, a lot of you are already using it and I won't be asking uh, by raise of hand who is not using it that would uh, be public shaming. Hello! <laughs> Alright, so uh, I'm going to start with... Um, Advantages of uh, getting going through the trouble of learning BIM, right? So it edits files. That's what it does. There are other file editors uh, like Emacs. If you want to compare VIM with Emacs or VIM with uh, integrated development environment, then we have a discussion. But if you want to compare it with Nano, get out. Okay. Um, you, you, uh, the main point of BIM is that your fingers stay on the home row always. You don't want to use the uh, arrows or worse, get the mouse all the time. So uh, your fingers get to stay there and all, all, of, all of the editing and moving around is done by Ninja Combo. Oh, these are really neat. Um, it's available always. Whatever the machine you're logging on, uh, whether it's a network appliance, or you're SSHing into a small project with a Raspberry Pi or something, you'll at least get access to VI. So it's really good to know how to use this program. And uh, there's a lot of uh, customization, plugins, documentation, and uh, information available right in the application and also online. No. <laughs> All right. Um, so there's basically two types of uh, users, I think. Uh, there's the coders that use their own copy of Vim, so they put uh, the, all their customization, things called plugins, and uh, they get stuff that uh, uh, we don't really care about because we're mostly logging in other people's systems, so we want to concentrate on uh, the core features and what is uh, common across all copies of Vim. So uh, syntax coloring, Vim scripts, plugins, uh, customizations, uh, foldings, and all the uh, neat features, they're there and you might want to look into them for your own uh, purpose, but you won't be using them very much at work. Now, uh, coders will still use all of this, but uh, uh, you'll be very much more interested in this slide. Uh, you can do remote editing. So on the command line, you can call Vim with a, a file on another system. It'll download it, and you'll edit a temporary copy, and it'll upload it again. This is really cool. You can edit compressed files. Again, it will uh, decompress it, and you'll be uh, working on a temporary copy. Search and replace by regex. If you don't know a regular expression, you are really missing out. Take the time to learn regular expression and you will understand the power of Vim and many, many other tools such as uh, Awk and Sed. Um, the original HGKL navigation, which means uh, the uh, moving around with the letters by leaving your hands on the home row. This is what it means. It started there, unless someone can correct me with the historical facts. But uh, this has been used over and over again, and you'll, you'll see this in other programs as well. Um, um, for example, some um, geeky, nav uh, geeky websites, they will also uh, often allow you to navigate from one post to another in a forum thread, for example, uh, by using the J and K to go up and down. And many other, uh, and especially you'll find this a lot in uh, command line um, uh, interfaces based programs, these, uh, these letters to move around. So it's really cool uh, to know them. With them you can do tabs and split windows and edit many files at once. So uh, I don't believe we're using this feature very much here. 
uh, and uh, vimdiff allows you to, for example, co uh, compare two files uh, side by side and highlighting the differences. You can record, uh, record and replay macros and uh, you got a cursor position history. Uh, all of this you can figure out by yourself uh, by, by reading on. I'll give you uh, starter points to, uh, to, to discover that. Uh, All right. Now I'll give you um, one specific trick uh, for those of you who are already familiar with Vim, so at least you get something out of this uh, speech. Uh, how I use uh, Vim to edit uh, HA proxy configuration on LB1 and LB2 at the same time. Okay. I log in. Uh, I use Vimdiff. So the VimDisk is, is basically like calling Vim, but with some options uh, activated automatically at start. And you call it with two file names, and it will uh, diff them. Uh, you use bash brace expansion. I hope you uh, read the bash uh, manual page uh, from time to time. And uh, Vim's SCP, support, uh, SCP protocol support. So let's say I'm on LB1 in the HA proxy, uh, slash etc HA proxy directory. I call vindiff with uh, start brace nothing comma, then SCP and LB2's um, IP address. Then the current working directory and haproxy.com. So this will expand that twice, once with Nothing, and the second time with the IP address of well, with the host name of the LB2 and the path to the file I want to edit. So I'll be calling Vimdiff with the two names, and then on the next page I'll show you a screenshot of what it looks like. So the lines that are similar are folded, are um, collapsed. You can expand them with a keystroke. And those that are different are highlighted, and a bit of context uh, lines are shown, and the rest of the file here is collapsed as well. So I see immediately that the two files are exactly identical, except where it should be different. So uh, this, uh, so you can work with uh, the two files and make sure that uh, everything is uh, everything is uh, well configured. Uh, without the need to copy files, then make some modifications with the possibility of, uh, of forgetting details. I think that's it. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is how to get started learning Vim. The first thing I invite you to do is to call Vim Tutor on the terminal whenever you have a half hour to an hour on a terminal on your own time. This will copy a tutorial file with instructions and it will uh, it will introduce you to uh, the moving and editing commands and um, then there's vimcasts.org this website is uh, mostly interesting for the video casts made by um, Drew Neal and he, he's uh, very good to explain and there's uh, on-screen examples and uh, I very much recommend this, especially if you're already familiar with Vim and you want to reach uh, ninja level mastery. This guy is really good to bring you there. And then there's uh, this, which is a book that I own by Drew Neal. Vim, um, edit text at the speed of thought. And that's not even a joke. It's really that fast to edit files with Vim. Uh, when you get familiar enough with it. If you want to borrow my book, it's available. Um, and then there's the online help that you can call. You can call help with an argument, um, either uh, the name of a thing you want to do or an abbreviation. And then there's this website, vimgolf.com. And these are uh, kind of like programming challenges. There's a few websites where You've got a programming challenge, and you've got to make, uh, you've got to um, um, get a result with the shortest amount of lines possible. Well, this is similar. You have to edit text from a starting point to at the end point with the um, least amount of keystrokes 
possible in BIM. And most of the challenges uh, uh, forbid the use of plugins, so you just can use the, uh, uh, the, the, the BIM base commands. And this is great if you want to, um, if you want to watch masters and discover tricks and neat stuff you can do with BIM that uh, you may have never thought of. And finally, I would be glad to discuss BIM at any time uh, if you have any questions or things you'd like to, uh, uh, to automate. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, All right, uh, Alex is always willing for that uh, a geeky subject.